When it comes to building the ultimate smart home, there's two things that are the top of most people's lists, your home audio and your smart lighting. But what if they were combined into one unit? Well, Zuma think that this Lumisonic downlight could be the ideal solution. And as huge fans of all things smart home and audio visual, we're excited to put it to the test. So, here we have it. This Zuma Lumisonic has been designed as a hassle-free luxury solution for combining your two smart home essentials, being both a downlight and a ceiling speaker, which comes in at £499 for the unit. Now we've got a compact wireless two-way speaker with a low energy tunable LED light built in, which is all housed in a pretty simple, easy to install downlight. Now, interestingly, some notable names in the industry are behind this product and brand founded by Morton Warren with the audio architecture designed by the likes of Lawrence Dickey, the guy who created the Bowers and Wilkins Nautilus speaker. But before we dive in, I want to address some concerns that we had ahead of testing these out, as I'm sure that they're questions that have crossed your mind too. And then after testing these out, see if those thoughts have been quashed or they were valid. So number one, surely when it comes to performance, something is gonna be compromised somewhere. Number two, do I really want both lighting and audio in one unit? Uh, number three, why would I want to lock myself into Zuma when I could go for a more established audio solution? Number four, what happens if I need to replace a light bulb? And five, is this going to be out of date in a couple of years' time? All questions I'll address throughout this review. And as these retail at £499 a pop, they're not cheap. So naturally, we are expecting impressive performance from this product. Now, as a small teaser, I'll let you guys know that I have been pleasantly surprised with this product. And while I don't think it will be the solution for every home, I do think that this will pique a lot of people's interest. And it could be a great addition to certain homes and spaces. Now we all know the struggle of having speakers, amps and cables all over the place and a million and one different apps on your phone to control both your lighting and your speakers. And Zoomers basically designed these to scrap all of that and keep things neatly tucked away in a wireless Morse room package up in the ceiling that you can stream to throughout your home. Now connections wise, it's pretty feature packed. You've got Wi-Fi, AirPlay or Bluetooth, or you can control from your phone or tablet with the Zoomer app. Or if you want to go hands-free, you have got the option to use your voice with Amazon Alexa too. Now the Zoom and Lumasonic does have a smaller brother called the Luminaire. Now this one doesn't have the speaker element, but it keeps the lighting part. And as this comes in at a lower price point, it's a good way of adding additional lighting into your space and having everything match and work together. Now you can actually connect up to 200 of these units in your home and have the same audio playing throughout or have different music in different zones. Now, obviously 200 is a lot. So the more realistic use case for the average consumer would be maybe having like a, a stereo pair of these in your space or if you've got a larger room then maybe you'd have six or eight or something like that and it would be a blend of both Lumisonic and Luminaire to suit your space and budget. Now these can also be used in a bathroom as they are IP65 rated and I'll come back to some of the features in a bit but I can see bathrooms being a very popular space for these. Now they do recommend certain amounts of Lumisonics and Luminaires for different size spaces on their website and they do offer a free survey to help you out when you buy them which is a nice touch but I'll leave a link to all of that in the description below for you guys to check out. Now in terms of my thoughts on the overall design the Lumisonic is exactly what it says on the tin. It's discreet, compact and fits in the ceiling very easily. The finish is sleek and minimalist and it's definitely something that I think you could put into any space. Now we've got it installed in our showroom and it does look great, especially if you're the type of person that thinks less is more. It's the size of a larger downlight but considerably smaller than the average ceiling speaker, which is great for those looking for a more discreet finish and easy to retrofit. So how do you go about installing one of these exactly then? Well, to be fair, it's about as simple as it gets, whether you're fitting from scratch or you're retrofitting it. Now, I'm not an electrician by any means, and I'm not gonna try and run you through the ins and outs of the entire installation process, but I'll just flash up the dimensions that you're gonna need to know for now. Now, you've got these tags here, which are called constant four springs. And basically, once you've cut your hole and wired up the components, you just place your zoomer downlight into position and pull these tags out. And then this bit will roll down 
and clasp onto your plasterboard to hold it really firmly in place. Now, one thing to mention, make sure that you don't bin these tags though, because if you ever want to take them out again, all you've got to do is push them back in and then the clasp will unroll and you can then just slip them out. Now, there's also a few different bezel options. So we've gone for this one here and these just simply clip on magnetically. Now there's round ones, square ones, as well as flush and proud options. So there is plenty of choice when it comes to how they look in your ceiling. Okay then, let's get into the fun part. What are these like for audio? Well, spec-wise, these are a two-way speaker powered by a built-in Class D monolithic amplifier. Now, in terms of drivers, we've got a long throw three inch aluminum cone and a loaded silk dome tweeter in here too. And these all deliver a maximum output of 75 watts. Now, as we all know though, spec is in everything. And as a bit of a different product to what we're used to on the channel, these are meant to offer a lot more than just pure music listening. And the way you consume audio with these is meant to be a little bit more of an experience. So rather than just telling you how these sound, I might as well show you how it all works too. So once you've got the Zuma app opened up, you'll see all of the zones that you've got around the house. Now for us, we've got the hallway, but you guys will have all of your different rooms. Now along the bottom, you've got your radio, well-being, and manage tabs. But if we click into this zone here, you'll be able to see your main hub for that room. Now here you can adjust the sound, lights, and the well-being effects of that room by clicking onto each specific tab. Now sticking with audio though, you'll see your play pause button, volume slider, what streaming section and your radio button down here in the corner. Now if we give the little radio icon a tap, you'll be able to see there's a load of station choices built in. So whether you want to listen to Capital, TalkSport, Radio 6 or anything like that, you can. Now at the time of filming, it's a list of 26 stations and we see Zuma add into this with future updates. So if your go-to station isn't there right now, it might well be very soon. Now, obviously you can work around it by using Alexa to stream the one that you want, but that all depends if you want that sort of functionality. Music wise, you're pretty much covered with all of your major streamers. So Amazon Music, Tidal Connect, Spotify Connect and Rune. And you get that play in the usual way by just selecting your Zuma zone in the respective app. Now I was a bit worried about lag, but it was actually really responsive and the streaming was pretty much instantaneous from the moment that you tap on your output. It's definitely one of the quicker platforms that I've used, which isn't a big thing, but it is a nice plus, especially if we're thinking about how these would actually work for you guys on a day-to-day -day basis. Okay, I know what you're thinking. The functionality is great, but how do they really sound for music? Well, I was actually pleasantly surprised and they were much better than I was expecting in all honesty. The bass performance was good and better than anticipated for its physical size. Obviously it's not rumble in your chest type of bass if that's something that you are after. But their biggest strength though had to be the audio projection and dispersion. Whether it was jazz, opera, rock, or certain dance and hip hop tracks, having a variety of different audio sources across the room helped the music feel really expansive, which is exactly what you want for this sort of thing. It's room filling, immersive, and they were really nice and clear as well. I think the vocals and highs were dealt with really well too, though I did notice that it lacked a little bit in the mid range at times. Tracks that I've listened to a lot, like Blinding Lights by The Weeknd, felt like they were missing some of the depth and realism, and needed a little bit of a boost in all honesty. But I think with these, we've got to be realistic. Now, admittedly, price-wise, at 500 pound per ceiling speaker, we should be pushing performance pretty hard, but then when you factor in costs of an amp, cable, fire hoods, and those kind of things that you would need with other speakers, then you'd be looking at a higher cost than a room of Lumisonics and Luminaires. So we're gonna give you guys a sound test with these two Lumisonics that we've got installed here in our entranceway into our office. Now, we've only got two because we normally use this space for background, music and that kind of thing. So we would recommend to get the full experience using four or six Lumisonics, but we're gonna give you a sound test with two to see how they go. Thank you. 
hopefully that sound test translated across well for you guys. Obviously what you're hearing over YouTube is gonna be different to what we're hearing in this space. But as I mentioned before the sound test, this is the entrance way into our office, hence why we've only got two Lumisonics installed. So we were really expecting to just have some nice background music, but I was actually really pleasantly surprised with the sound profile and performance of just having two of them. So having four or six I'd imagine would be really impressive. I think the thing that really stood out for me was the low end performance in particular, especially when you consider the form factor of these speakers. I think Zoom is more for those of you that want that simplicity and a listening experience that complements your lifestyle rather than being the be all and end of it. Now back in the app, you've also got your wellbeing section, which I feel will be an ace card for Zuma over time. Currently, this is more focused on ambient audio rather than music. So there's eight different experiences to choose from and they all do slightly different things when it comes to audio and light. So to give you a quick idea though, one of my favorites was Energize and this is basically meant to be like bright daylight and create sounds of the ocean, whereas something like Inner Peace is meant to be more like a Brazilian rainforest if you get the gist. Now it's not something that I ever saw myself needing at home and obviously you can use them however you want to, but they are nice added extras to have in the background when you're working from home, relaxing in the bath, doing the dishes and definitely something that I can see loads of potential with. Now obviously there's only eight at the minute and annoyingly there's no sleep timer which would have confirmed a place for these in my bedroom because who doesn't want to feel like they're sleeping out on the beach. But again, this is something that I think is gonna get added to later down the line with some software updates. So I'm looking forward to that one for sure. So onto the lighting side of things, all of that is gonna be controlled in this section here. The LED system has a lumens rating of 530 and CRI of 90 plus and is supposed to be super energy efficient. And you've got your six pre-programmed light scenes built in down here. Plus, you've also got over 100 increments of dimming and a natural warm to cool color range of 2800 to 4800 Kelvin with these sliders here, which enable you to select an effect depending on your mood or intended scene. Now, Zuma has a pretty big focus on the idea that lighting can do so much more for your mind and body than just light up a room. And to be fair, without going all health guru on you guys, I can actually see where they're going with it. Having played around with all of the different settings for a while now, I've actually been really impressed impressed with how it all works, but if I was nitpicking, I would have liked to have been able to add my own saveable light scene if I could. But after speaking to Zuma, this will be coming in a future update. That aside though, I think the color tuning technology was decent. It was intuitive, accurate, and definitely something that I could see myself using on a daily basis throughout my home. Being able to adjust the color temperature, brightness, or intensity depending on what time of day it was or what I was doing was great. Now obviously this isn't groundbreaking, but the added benefit of music alongside the dynamic lighting kicks the ambience up a notch as well. And I can see why people would want this sort of functionality at home. For me personally though, the absolute standout feature has to be this one here, the autonomous circadian rhythm mode. Now, you're probably thinking, what on earth is that? Well, basically, a circadian rhythm is the 24-hour internal clock in our brain that regulates when we feel alert and sleepy by responding to the light changes that naturally happen throughout the day. Now, I'll get Sam to flash up an image of these sorts of light changes, but think bright and early mornings and golden hour in the evening. Now, obviously, we all live pretty busy lives, and if you're indoors a lot, you don't really get exposed to as much of these changes in light as we probably should, but having your lighting replicate this can improve your overall all well-being by increasing energy levels, reducing stress, and improving sleep patterns. It uses their smart lights and your location to copy the day's natural circadian rhythm, which in theory should give you all of these perceived benefits, which is actually nuts. Now, in an ideal world, I'd have every light set in autonomous mode, and I'd have scenes set with certain schedules and all that kind of thing as well, but you can't have it all just yet. So, Zuma, little heads up for that next update. Now, one of my questions at the start was what happens if you need to change the light bulb? Well, these aren't replaceable. So if you need to change the bulb, you'll have to change the whole fixture. Now that sounded pretty alien to me at the start, but after some research, this is something that we are seeing a lot with other high-end light fixtures on the market, like or Luna, for example, as we move towards more sustainable solutions and longer lifespans. Now Zuma does say that these are meant to last between 12 to 15 years. So when you put that into context of your other tech, 
it's pretty similar. I'd be buzzing if my iPhone lasted for 12 years. But if it's not for you, then you might need to look at alternative solutions. Now, do I think these are going to get outdated really quickly? Well, not necessarily. They're designed so every element is fully software updatable, and with a class-leading 1.4 gigahertz quad-core processor, there's plenty of room to improve later down the line. And I do think this is the reality of this type of tech. Now, like I said, Zuma is not gonna be for everyone, but I do think that there's a place for it if you're the right sort of person or if you've got a certain type of space. So I've actually come up with a couple of different scenarios that might help you figure out if these are gonna be right for you or not. So first up, we've got Emily and Tom. They're in the process of building their dream home, but tech isn't really their thing and they're more casual listeners when it comes to audio. They love hosting parties, working out, and occasionally winding down with a nice glass of red. Now they've got the budget, but they just want a mortar room system that's easy to install and use that still delivers great audio and top quality functionality. They're gonna go for Zuma. Next, let me introduce you guys to Jeremy. He's got Sonos hooked up throughout the house. He's had it for years, likes the platform, and doesn't really see himself straying anytime soon. However, he has been looking at different options to upgrade his bathroom with some top quality audio and lighting and doesn't mind it being separate from the rest of his system. Now he wants a bathroom that feels like his very own spa and Zuma is gonna be a great option for him. Finally, meet Archie. He's a serious listener and is looking for the best of the best throughout his home, but isn't quite ready to invest everywhere just yet. He's already got some smart functioning lighting and he just wants to nail the audio in his listening zone first and then expand the rest of his system over time with a blend of different products, including ceiling speakers, soundbars, and more. He's not gonna go for Zuma. So, are you an Emily and Tom, a Jeremy, or an Archie? Obviously, there's plenty of other scenarios and factors to take into account, but hopefully this has helped you decide whether Zuma is right for you. I think in terms of my personal overall thoughts, they have answered a lot of my initial concerns. And to be fair, we do have to give credit where credit is due. The concept works and I love the benefits. And I think it solves the problems that it sets out to. The overall functionality is good and there's so much potential for upgrades in the future because, I mean, let's not forget, we're still in Gen 1 right now. While I don't think it's quite there yet for more serious listeners, for those looking for simplicity and a solid performance, however, I do think this is a good option and seriously worth a look, especially if you are looking for a retrofit audio option. Now, I think you've really got to weigh up if you're the right sort of person or not. For me, you guys all know that I'm a Sonos user, so I didn't really see a need for it in my home, but after having lived with it for the past couple of weeks, I am tempted to add some into my bathroom or bedroom, so it's definitely something that has grown on me, and I do love the mindfulness section and features. But of course, I'm really interested to see what you guys think of this type of solution. Is it something that you'd be into? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed and I'll catch you all in the next one.